Welcome to today's 3D print. This is more of a little um, informative video. I want to. I'm in a Kia group because I have a Kia Soul, and someone just posted a picture of their key talking about how they fix their lock button. Well, there's something you need to be aware of. You really don't want to be posting pictures of your keys. And I'm show you why especially this kind of key you'll notice I'm obscuring a lot of this picture on purpose so that you don't see it I've already created a lasso tool to go around just this part of the key ignoring this little bit on the side here because that's the side of the key all I need is this little portion from this line right here down to below where this key is cut I'm going to protect most of my bidding that's what it's called bidding of my key now you notice this key is a standard shape it is seven millimeters wide 7.5 I think it might be 7.5 millimeters wide by three millimeters thick and it's three layers one millimeter thick each so from the end I'm going to create three one millimeter wafers one side is the bidding on one side of the key, and one side is the bidding on the other side of the key, and the center is just a square shaft. It is insidiously easy to duplicate car keys, especially this kind of car key, because they're even strong enough to be used straight off the printer, and the resolution of even a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and an FDM printer is sufficient. To be able to copy this key and it will work they usually require a little bit of reinforcement so they don't break when you put them in the car because the, you actually do need a certain amount of torque to be able to turn the lock barrel especially if it's not a newer car and it has been well maintained but i have 3d printed both resin and fdm keys for my car because i am never paying somebody 106 dollars to duplicate a key for me ever again <laughs> cat stole my keys so that's annoying so now i'm going to turn well let me show you that so i created a lasso to create you can kind of sort of see it here so the lasso starts here and goes to this line right here captures this edge and this edge here not the side so even though this is slightly oblique this is more than flat enough for me to be able to copy this key now I'm going to turn this window off before I show any more of that key. So let me go and crop that out and um, finish a little bit more editing and I will be right back. Okay, so I've cropped out the key body here with the bidding on it and I rotated it and straightened it. I have a window covering up the bidding so you can't do the same thing I'm doing with his key. <laughs> um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the lasso magnetic tool and I'm gonna trace out the lines here. I'll extend that one a little bit. Trust me, you could be off by a fraction here. There's enough tolerance built into this. That's why they can copy your keys at a regular place because the tolerances aren't that high. I'm gonna trace this out and create a black image and delete everything else. All I'm gonna create is this black image. Now the important thing, however, is part of the image has to be a full width here. That's, you're gonna see why we need that full width later. I'll show it to you once I'm done highlighting it, so stay tuned. Okay, so you, hmm, you can't see it now that I've opened, oh, there it goes. You can see I've highlighted the outline of the key shape. Okay, and I also make sure I have a little bar at the top here that's the full width. This way I can get the scale correctly to get size correctly. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill this all in with the paintbrush to make it all black. And then I'm going to delete everything on the outside by making it all white. And that will give me a silhouette of the bidding for the key. Because it's a standard type of key, we already know it's 7.5 millimeters wide and 1 millimeter deep. So all we need to do is scale this to 7 millimeters wide in the 3d modeling program and we can turn it into a key um, I'm gonna do that right now and I'll be right back so here you can see I filled in with the paintbrush the inside all black now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invert the mask and make the rest of it white there we go I now have my black and white mask to um, 
duplicate the key. It's pretty low res. I probably should have increased the resolution before I did this, but I don't think I need to. I think that's more than enough to get me what I need. What we need to do now is turn this into an SVG. So we're going to do um, a conversion online to convert from, I think I'm going to save it as a PNG, I think, or JPEG. And then I'm going to convert it to SVG, which will then allow me to import it into Tinkercad. So here we are at convertio.co, jpeg-svg. If you just type in convert jpeg to SVG, it'll be the first link. And we are going to upload. Where is it at? We are going to upload John Heaton's key. I don't want to show that to you for long enough because it actually shows you a thumbnail of the key. So now I'm going to upload John Heaton's key into an, into an SVG. And there we go. I now have John Heaton's key SVG, which I can download. And now we're going to bring that into Tinkercad. Okay, so here we are. I clicked on import. And I imported John Heaton's SVG key um, drawing. And here it is. The only change I had to make to it is I scaled it until it was um, uh, 75 millimeters wide. Remember, the key needs to be 7.5 millimeters wide. I'm doing everything in 10x. So this is all at 10 times scale. Because working on something that's 7.5 millimeters wide is extremely difficult in this software. It's not made for it. So everything is done at 10x. And then in the slicer, I just shrink it to 10% before I print it. And then I have the whole key without having any issues. Okay. So here's your standard 7.5 millimeter wide by... Um, because remember, 75 divided by 10 is 7.5, and 30 divided by 10 is 3, and each of these layers is 1 millimeter. So I have, I have this little square here to obscure his bidding so that you don't see all of what his key bidding looks like. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a hole. I'm going to make it quite a bit taller, but not tall enough for you to see what it looks like. And I'm going to place it on the plane of this here, and cut it out of this. This bit on the end here is going to line up with this edge here, and I will cut the key out. I will then rotate the 180 degrees and cut it out again. And the end result will be I'll have a cut key. So this is your standard key blank. What's this here? This is a reinforcement. So I was able to download. I don't have one to show you. Do I have one to show you? I don't think I have one to show you. Nope, I ain't got one to show you that. Most of them are in the car, so I don't have any to show you what it looks like. But I have this little this little brass or steel, brass colored steel, little charm, like a tag. Okay? And it's a little tiny metal tag that's seven and a half millimeters wide. That's why I bought it. And the idea is when I'm done printing this, I will just glue that little tag right into it. And this way, when you stick the key into the keyway. That little metal tag is going to be half inside and half outside of the keyway. So that when you torque the key, the metal tag absorbs the torque instead of the key absorbing the torque. So that will be my metal portion of the key. One of them is usually enough. I can also put that on both sides and put two pieces in if I want. So if you have an unusually hard to turn key, you might want to double it. Because, you know, if you break it, it's going to cost you... Uh, 1.5 cents to print another one and it takes about seven minutes to print this yeah it's fast <laughs> even fdm printing it, it takes like four times longer to heat the printer up than it does to actually print the key it's so fast i even print my own key head i insert this into the key head and there you go i have a copy of your key so i'm going to do that next we're going to put the parts into place and then combine them into a finished key blank so stay tuned so here we go. I've lined up the key with that little front edge there. And I've lifted it up 20 millimeters. So it's sitting right on top of this key surface here. And now I'm going to, the, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. So Control D. So now there's two of them there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick one of them. And we're going to pick our key shaft. And we're going to merge it. Bingo bango, we just cut the key out of one side, and then I'm going to take this key shaft, set, select off, take the key shaft, and I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees, and then I'm going to merge it with the other one that I made. 
Uh, it's got a little bit of an edge on it, but I think that'll be okay. Bingo, bango. And there we go. I now have a copy of John Heaton's key. And this will open his door. And this will turn on his engine. Assuming he doesn't have any um, electronics in the key. So, um, usually you can open the door even with an electronic key. But you might not be able to start the engine. Depends on the car. Some cars, there's a chip inside the key that will work with the key to keep you from starting the car, for example. But this will get me into his car. <laughs> um, so, there you go. I now have a copy of his key. There's my, my hole. I can flip that around to make that easier to see. So, there's my little insert for my reinforcement tab. It's like a little key tag kind of thing. A little tiny thing. Um, I will export this and then in the slicer shrink it by um, um, to 10% of its size and then print it. And once I print it, I can then use this as a key for his car. So, yeah, be careful posting pictures of your keys. But the best thing you could do when you need to post a picture is just pinch half the bidding in your finger like this right in the middle so that you're always covering the same part when you do it all right so this way you're not showing off the key for your car and even if you have like a key like this like an emergency this is my car's electronic so you have to have this to start the car but there's also a backup key if the battery's dead i mean i'm going to cover up the bidding on that too but that key is also duplicatable it's a little bit harder to 3d print Resin printing works a lot better for this kind of key, and it's also harder to strengthen this kind of key because they tend to be a little weak, but it still works. This works for your safety deposit box. This works for, um, this can even work for key, dimple locks. All I have to do is generate a standardized dimple in Tinkercad here, and then use your image for where to put each dimple. I can duplicate dimple locks with this. Um, house keys, shed keys, padlock keys, car keys yeah don't post pictures of your keys <laughs> or at least blade them you know so they're like this you know you're not going to get much from that but when you show that key flat on like this you're just saying please please copy my key please duplicate my key <laughs> uh, I'm going to try to find it if I can but um I'm going to show you next in the slicer how fast this will print. It's, it's, it's scary fast how it'll fast it'll print. So here we are in the slicer, and I have the key. I also imported the little square in order to um, be able to hide the bidding on the key. Now we got scaled down to 10%. Here we are scaled down. I'm still hiding the bidding underneath this little square so that I don't expose this guy's actual key to all of you guys on the Internet. There's a drawing like this, especially, you could perspective correct and copy very easily because it's got defined edges. So as you can see, there's not going to be much of a print here. Let me go ahead and slice it. And here we go. We have the slice. You can see it's telling me it's going to take five minutes to print this. So less than ten minutes when you include warm-up time. Um, now this is one of those um, rare cases where it might actually be better to print outside in so you might want to tell it to print the outside layer first just for the first layer uh, so that you get that perimeter set up if you don't have very good first layer adhesion this is also a good time to use a raft if you have difficulty with that i didn't let it finish this layer on top here it's got five more layers to print but obviously if i show you that you're going to see the bidding for the key and that's it when you put that little metal insert in here this key is strong enough to turn the tumblers in the lock and it will work in the car these flat keys especially are crazy easy to duplicate so be careful i'm going to cover up the bottom half of the key of course because i don't want to show it to you but there's the key that opens up my key of soul i have a handle i print out and glue that into i even put i can even customize my handle so i call my soul the soul reaper <laughs> you know after um bleach and um so I put right on the key, Soul Reaper. <laughs> I can also print the key in green to match the car. So yeah, that is strong enough to open the door and start the engine. So please be very careful posting pictures of your key on the internet. 
put your finger over the middle of the key. Always do the middle of the key. Because this way, if you post a picture multiple times to the internet, they can't piece the pictures together to get a copy of your key. Is that being paranoid? Eh, a little bit. But um, when you get used to it, you'll just naturally do it. You'll go to show somebody your key, and you'll just you'll do that to cover up the bidding on the key so people can't copy it because, um, you know, if they know you got valuable stuff and your neighbor sees that and they have a 3D printer, <laughs> you don't even need a 3D printer. You know, a, a piece of um, a Dremel and a, a blank key and they could, you know, scale it in Photoshop, print it out, glue it onto the metal blank and sit there and make a metal blank key that will probably be good enough to get into your car, especially if they use a softer metal. Um, because remember, it doesn't have to be super stiff. It just has to be as stiff as a piece of plastic. And you can reinforce it with a little metal tab. So they could, um, you know, carve your key out of a piece of plastic or a softer metal or something like that. Uh, especially yours that doesn't have a channel going up the middle. It's just the bidding. That's all you got to cut out is the bidding. So be careful. Don't post pictures of your keys on the internet. Or us with 3D printers can copy your keys. <laughs>